Hello, viewer, and welcome to Spotlight here on Hope TV, where you look and live. And we always do our very best to bring to you perspectives uh, that inform you, especially uh, as a Christian, so that as you interact with particular things uh, that are happening in our contemporary society, you'll be better informed. And we are glad to have uh, with us uh, on this Spotlight Edition, uh, Bishop Hudson Ndeda. Uh, Bishop is the national chairman uh, of the Church and Clergy Association of Kenya. And he's known uh, for being very articulate about contemporary issues and, and especially how the church uh, should engage these issues to have an effective and impactful um, uh, you know, role in the society. So we are happy. Again, welcome, Bishop. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Edward, for having me. Welcome back. I really appreciate it. Welcome back. If you thank see you. yourself coming back, just know that uh, the viewers are saying, hey, we need Bishop Hudson back. I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. And as always, we will do our best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So good to see you. And uh, I'm sure as, as a church, you are always up to something. You know, the church is always, uh, since the COVID time, uh, the church has had a lot uh, uh, on its plate. We also now have had the time for the vaccination. Yes. Uh, and the church is uh, also pretty uh, involved in that. We have elections coming up. But before elections are the campaigns, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> coming up. So there's a lot of um, uh, national issues that are going on. Uh, and just want to uh, also hear from you in terms of... Um, vaccination, right, and the pandemic. Uh, what's, uh, what's your church doing on that? Oh, yeah, about the COVID-19 vaccination, mm -hmm. um, it is a good idea. The only bit that was not right is to make it forceful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what the government needs to do is to sensitize people so that people get to know why they should have it. And then uh, eventually everybody will be able to get in uh, but so far, so good. We have seen the exercise gone on very well. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate the efforts that the government is putting in. Okay. Yeah. You know, and uh, when you talk about the vaccine and spirituality, some people have really spoken um, negatively about the vaccine. And uh, they have given spiritual reasons for that, mm -hmm. including uh, all this vaccination is, uh, uh, is you know, is... It's part of the 666, you know? Mm. Uh, some very interesting uh, views. Uh, what would you, how would you speak to that, especially in terms of the relationship between spirituality and science? Uh, honestly speaking, uh, uh, the vaccine, uh, I doubt it is connected with the 666, let's uh, The only thing I know about the vaccine, people are a bit careful. Mm -hmm. They feel that it came in too fast, mm -hmm. so they, they are not sure that it has gone enough, uh, through enough tests that it's supposed to go through so that people, uh, people need to be assured that it is safe. Mm -hmm. I think that is the problem, but uh, about the connection with 666, mm, I don't want to be part of it. I can't support it okay. with the Bible. I cannot support it from the Bible. I cannot support it with scriptures. And therefore, we leave it to everybody to think uh, about it the way they think about mm -hmm. it. But personally, I don't associate it with it. You know, and uh, also, let's stay with the vaccine also and science. Yeah. The church has been in prayer quite a bit. Yes. And every church that you go to or you listen to on Sundays, now we've lots, we have a lot of church online. Yeah. One of the prayers they make is, God, take away this pandemic from us, right? And uh, it seems that the most practical uh, thing that has come is a vaccine. You know? mm. uh, would you then speak uh, of the vaccine or the development of science as an answered prayer? Um, all I know, God said, God spoke about these things long at time ago, even before they came here, when he said if he sends a pestilence and all that, what he said we pray. Uh, he said, if my people who are called by my name, if they pray and uh, seek God and live their wicked go uh, ways, God will heal the land. So I want to associate the progress that we have on prayer. The government will agree when they opened churches for prayers, things are cooling down. 
things are coming down. And this is what we were asking. And solutions for. as well. Yes, and mm -hmm. solutions are coming up. Mm -hmm. You know, they might not understand. Somebody might under, under, underread the church, but what the church is doing is very powerful. Mm -hmm. There are so many people we are praying for in churches and they're getting healed. The, those who have been trying medicines and all that, we are not saying sons is not working, but it was bad to remove God from the sin. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. it was supposed to go alongside, together. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we thank God that the country is now healing. Uh, we are seeing the, it is coming down. The, it is coming down and we really appreciate. We thank God for what is happening and we will continue praying. We will not stop praying. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And, and, and for a time, uh, <clears throat> the church was the main place for the politician. Yes. Because <clears throat> all rallies were banned and they still are banned by, for, from what I recollect. Mm -hmm. Although we are not seeing as, if we see as if the ban has been lifted from the way they are, Politicians are working. Mm. But um, the church then spoke and said, hey, politicians, you should not speak in the sanctuary. Mm. Uh, not everyone, but a big section of the church. Yes. But you're welcome to worship. But also, if you want to speak, you speak outside the sanctuary after. Yes. Uh, that was a very bold declaration. Mm. Uh, what would you say has been the effect of that, both um, for the church and also for the politician. Oh yes, I, I remember the last time I was with you, I spoke about it. Um, indeed, we, we want to thank a few politicians who have honored the voice of the church. We, we are not demonizing them. These are our sons, these are our daughters, and some of them are members in our churches. Uh, what we are not happy with is when they come to the service and they turn it into a political rally. But since the church spoke, we have seen changes. We have seen them come to worship, and then after worship, they go and have a rally outside. That is what we have been saying. But we know they can do better than what they are doing. We have a few elements who still speak about politics in church, but uh, we request that they respect the places of worship. Uh, let everybody come to worship, just like any other person. But we love them. We appreciate them. They are, they are our brothers, as I said. Uh, they are our sisters, and they are our colleagues, and they are our members. But we have seen progress. And even for the politicians, I know they, have, uh, they must have seen that this is the right thing mm -hmm. to do. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and um, going forward, what do you see as uh, this, let me call it, this reorganization of the presence of the politicians in the church, mm. how do you see it affecting or impacting the relationship between the church and the politician? Oh, the relationship um, is good. But then uh, uh, we have learned that the politicians, even as much as they try to ignore the church, they have realized that that is where the people are. They realize everybody who walks around outside there, whether they are born again or not, mm -hmm. at least they go to some church somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that is why you see everybody, even those people who have not go, been going to church, the politicians whom we've not been seeing in church, now they can go to church and all that. We cannot do without God. Mm -hmm. uh, and God is everything <coughs> in our lives. So we, we still keep a good relationship with politicians because those are political leaders and we are spiritual leaders and there is no king without uh, a prophet it is only that the leaders of today they don't recognize that every king every leader needs a spiritual advice it needs some people who uh, needs people who speak into their life and give direction spiritual direction uh, so far so good okay yeah and and the, many people were definitely impressed by the church when they made that um reorganization and uh, explain the reasons behind it. The question that now is ringing on many people's minds is, would the church sustain it? You know, would the church sustain uh, or would there be also another reorganization? And we start seeing again politicians back, you know, in the church. Uh, does the church have the muscle to sustain this arrangement or reorganization throughout the campaign period? Okay, uh, that is a good question. We cannot control the mind of everyone. We will have a few elements who will still allow that. But uh, we leave that to their conscience to guide them if they are doing the right thing. Because if the entire church is speaking 
in one direction, why should you go different? If truly you are a servant of God, we urge you. We have no problem with politicians coming to church. Welcome them, let them come and worship, let them come. If there is a fundraiser, let them come and do it. But for politics, it is very good if we separate them from the pulpit mm -hmm. and from the sanctuaries, inside the sanctuary. So uh, I can't say that we will get it 100%. Mm -hmm. I have to admit, because I'm a sincere man, we will have a few elements. But the larger part of the church has done very well on this. And we, we pray that God will give us the strength to sustain this. Mm -hmm. that, that is the best direction to take as a church. Okay. Yes. Uh, and uh, staying with the politicians. Yes. Uh, we see that they are now really um, on the trail and they're making popular their positions and their, you know, their, their, the centers of their campaign. Uh, and uh, you listen to the loudest voices and what they really are, at, what's at the heart of their, of, their, of, their, of their expressions is economics, is money, right? And we know that as a country, we have really suffered for a long time mm. economically. Yeah. But my question to you, um, Bishop, when you read the scriptures, you know, when uh, Christ Jesus talks about abundant life, yes. I mean, is abundant life only an economic equation or what's going on? What, what's your understanding? Uh, yes, uh, they're getting it wrong. Mm -hmm. Indeed, we are seeing every politician and particularly the presidential candidate. Everybody is talking about money. Mm -hmm. Everybody is talking about economy. But they need to come to a point when they realize life is more than money, is more than just economy. But you see, politicians are opportunists. Uh, they would want to hit where it is best. They know that majority of Kenyans are poor. So they know when they speak the money language, money does not answer to everything. Mm. We have spiritual matters here. We have moral issues here that they need to be addressed. So we, uh, my feeling is that he is not, uh, they are not taking a whole thing. Because uh, if money was answering to everything, then the youth who fought, for example, in Kisum, they wouldn't have fought because they had gotten money. But you realize they were fighting over the very money they get because they have money minus morals, mm -hmm. minus good character and all that. So uh, I think we need to hear more than economy. We need to hear, for example, how they will promote uh, 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 churches and uh, worship in this nation. We need to hear how they will uh, build more schools. More, it is more than mm -hmm. what they are talking about. <coughs> okay. Yeah, let them speak about everything that pertains to a human being. Mm -hmm. Yes. And sometimes you would think that there could be a season where economics could be the heart of the matter, but there could be another season where, say, family <laughs> is the heart of the matter, yes. right? Uh, and, uh, I mean, just bringing that uh, a holistic approach to their message, as you say, it's, is important. You know, and you've, you've mentioned about um, uh, spirituality and how the politicians would support that area of life. Mm. And one of the things that we have observed in the last uh, few weeks is also, the, for the, I think for the very first time, a coalition you know, of um, uh, parties, political parties, that are united by what they describe as godly values. Yes. And so they come together because that is their common platform. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they, that is the Eagles National Alliance. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would want to hear your comment on that formation and also what strategies they need to uh, put in place so that, I mean, they can truly be effective and impactful. Yeah, uh, that is a good idea. Uh, because uh, for a long time, the church have been, has been asked in this country not to speak about politics. But the more we keep quiet, we realize we are all affected. We all live in this country. When the economy is bad, it also affects us. When there is no peace, we are also affected and all that. So we have uh, decided to take an active role in politics in terms of shaping uh, where the nation is headed. And that thinking is good. Uh, they only need to reach out more. They have not reached out enough. Probably they need to reach out through umbrella bodies. 
and bring everybody on board so that we see how best we can speak uh, with one voice and move forward uh, being united as a church. Mm -hmm. But we urge the church uh, to take an active role uh, in politics. Let us not sit aside and then we begin to complain after the elections that the leaders are not good. Uh, we need to make a decision on how the election process goes on and all that. I've been speaking about, for example, I'm advocating for, uh, we're talking to IBC, we're talking to EACC, the anti-corruption body, and uh, the C CID. Let us not allow leaders without integrity mm -hmm. to vie. Uh, they need to follow chapter six totally. Those leaders who have integrity issues must not be on the ballot in the coming election. That is how we, we try to heal the nation. Mm -hmm. That is how we try to bring up good leaders who will uphold good morals and all that. Mm -hmm. So we will be active about politics. Okay. Yes. And you, you bring a, big, a good point there about mm -hmm. the need for or the push by the church or the insistence by the church to have the integrity aspect yes. be a big factor you yes. know, in the coming elections, which we've not seen in the past. Yes. It's as if we have no such chapter. Mm. You know, that's, such, such a chapter does not exist. Mm. Uh, that's one area, integrity. What are the other areas you would say the church should, are, the, the church is heavily interested in, both in terms of... Um, the campaign season and also in terms of the kind of leader would want at the end uh, of uh, the election period. Yes, uh, yeah, we, we realize that you, you have leaders, somebody with the tag of a honorable man, but the things they're doing are not honorable. They need to understand what honorable means. They need to behave honorably. They need to conduct themselves honorably. Uh, we, we want the IBC to give this country a gift in 22 and the only gift they give us because the very people who doesn't have integrity they have money to bribe our youth and eventually get into office we want them stopped at that chapter chapter six let people be told brother we love you you are a brother but your character your integrity mm -hmm. is so wanting mm -hmm. to become a honorable member and all that uh, the church is, has an interest also mm -hmm. in the kind of leaders who will be elected, and especially the presidential candidates. Mm -hmm. We want to hear them say how they will promote the freedom of worship in this country. That is a very important aspect for us. We have had a moratorium on registration of churches that has run along for six years, actually seven years. That is very wrong. We want to hear them tell us whether they will lift up that moratorium or they will uphold it. So that when we make decisions, we make decisions, because we also have an interest as a church. We are in this country. We also want to hear about uh, self-regulation. Will they support self-regulation of churches? Uh, for example, uh, the, one of the reasons why there is a moratorium on church registrations, uh, they talked of uh, the... Uh, some characters of pastors and we had the former AG saying that uh, the pastors must be trained and all that. Uh, we are not against education. We want pastors to be trained. We want pastors to be educated. But uh, there are issues they cannot handle. They need to talk to us. When we do self-regulation, the issues will handle from our side. Because one, we have doctrinal issues uh, on our side. We had the government talk of accreditable Bible schools, which one is accredited? Because uh, uh, Catholics have doctrines, their own doctrine. We have Pentecostals who have their own doctrine. Mm. We have uh, people like the Corino, they have uh, their own doctrine. And we don't want to interfere with people's doctrine. So when we self-regulate, we are going to advocate for training of pastors. But this must be very clear, not as a government requirement. Mm -hmm. That is what we don't want to hear. Not as a government requirement. We will train pastors to equip them so that they can serve better. And when we do it self, then we will take care of our doctrinal issues that are amongst us. We will allow those who profess to a certain doctrine to continue doing what they're doing because there's freedom of worship in this nation and we don't want to interfere with that. 
So uh, we really want to hear that from the presidential candidate. If they win the election, how are they going to work with the church? Mm -hmm. How are they going to promote the freedom of worship? And uh, uh, for those that are listening to me, we are coming. We will be knocking on your doors. We want to sit down with you as, as an association. Uh, we want to hear it from your mouth that you will be able to do that so that if you are elected, we will hold you accountable to that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Quite some heavy interests there yes. uh, coming from the church. Yeah. Uh, and uh, just in this season, as politicians are selling their, uh, beginning to sell you know, their ideas to the people, uh, we have seen young people almost living in a world of their own mm -hmm. because we've seen the young people in schools especially uh, begin to speak another language. They're not speaking the campaign language. Mm -hmm. They are speaking a language of distress. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one of the things we've seen uh, is a lot of schools now uh, being you know, touched and uh, these are young people doing it. Uh, and it is an issue of great concern. Yes. And there are all these reasons being given as to why this is happening, right? Uh, what's your response to that? Uh, I think that is a very good question. Uh, it, we would have done, not done justice if we didn't talk about mm -hmm. it in this program. Yeah, what is happening in schools is very unfortunate. And we are praying for our sons and daughters. And how we pray that God will speak to our hearts, their hearts and they, they change, and it's not the right direction we, we're taking. But it is a good point for the government to sit down and ask themselves, could there be a problem? Because from our side, we feel there is a problem, and especially with the uh, school calendar. I want you to think about, uh, this problem is not only with the students, mm -hmm. it is with the teachers, it has gone down to the parents. It is affecting everybody. Let's begin by the student. Uh, this student is supposed to cover the same syllabus they have been covering in three months. They, they are supposed to cover it in one and a half months. Uh, sporting activities, because of the COVID situation, they are not there in schools because that is where they, need, they used to relieve their stress from and all that. When they sport and go back to class, they refresh and all that. So we have a feeling as, as an association that there is pressure on these students. Pressure, that means they sleep late, they wake up early so that they be able to cover the syllabus. And uh, you remember in this calendar, there was no at this uh, midterm holiday. It has just come in. But in their mind, when they went to school, they knew it was not there. We feel it is a contributor. Because under that environment of pressure, where the teacher comes and asks whether you have finished the assignment, there is pressure from the teacher to the students to finish the assignment. So I feel that the students wanted to get out of that environment so that they get uh, a breather uh, at home. So the government needs to look at that. But teachers are not speaking, but they're also under pressure. Because the same teacher who used to cover syllabus in three months, he has to do it within one and a half months or a shorter period than they used to do. Uh, that is what is all happening. So could it be that when that pressure comes on a teacher, probably they will relieve some pressure to the student and probably the students will misbehave. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we need to look at it all round. Okay. Uh, don't just look at the student. We also look at the teacher. What are they going through? Mm -hmm. they, do they have enough time to rest and all that? Now we come to the parents. The parents also are pressured. They are under stress. Uh, like the last time, it lasted one and a half months. We paid school fees in full just like we used to pay it in three months. So the very school fees that I used to spread in three months, paying a little, little, now I have to pay it in one and a half months. It is that pressure. So the student is pressured, the teacher is pressured, the parent is pressured. Mm. I want to speak to the principals because we have seen in media and uh, we are also parents. 
some principals have taken advantage of this situation, which is not a good thing. We want them to know they are also parents and they're also human beings and they, they live in this country. Don't overcharge parents when there is an incident. Let's say it is a dorm that was burned and it's just some 10 mattresses and maybe a few beds that are burned. And you charge every parent in school 1,500 shillings. You are taking advantage of a situation. But um, to heal this also, I also want to talk to parents. We need to begin to raise a society that is God-fearing. A society, because when there is God-fearing, uh, it will uh, go down even to the schools. There are some students who cannot do what is happening in school because of the way they have been raised up. What do you make of parents who go to church without children? A parent, you go to church, you leave your children home. You are not helping this child to come up well. The Bible says you train up a child in a way he should go, and when he grows up, he will not leave it. So I urge parents, kindly make a way and make sure that you take your children to church. There are some things they will be taught there that you cannot teach them home, mm -hmm. and it will make a huge contribution to their morals. So you, uh, what, what I hear you say is that even spirituality yes. is part of the solution yes. you know, to this um, distress that's happening. But uh, just before we leave the students, the, 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 the high schoolers, uh, it's one thing for them to express their cares, to express their concerns, uh, to express things that need to be attended to. But it's another thing for them to speak the language of fire, right? So where, where, where do they get the boldness to, or where have they learned this from, that they can actually uh, touch down entire constructions that have taken years to put together, you know, and, I mean, that language of fire, I mean, how would you, how would you decode it for us? Uh, brother, the, the Bible records that the, the enemy, Satan, mm -hmm. he was seen falling from heaven, coming <laughs> down <laughs> like lightning. But it doesn't record elsewhere that he was seen going back. So this guy is around. <laughs> we need to agree that the enemy is around mm -hmm. and he's working. Mm -hmm. We know that these things that are happening in school that just beyond character, that that's beyond morals. We, we have heard of devil worship. We have heard of students being recruited in schools and all that. Um, it, it is important for parents to begin to talk to their, to their children and get to understand them because uh, uh, some of these boys and girls, they could be involved in things mm -hmm. that are not normal because uh, it is not normal mm -hmm. for somebody to burn the very bed he sleeps on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for somebody to burn the very door that shelters them mm -hmm. and all that. When you look at it that way, you feel there is much more to that. So for, for me, I feel this uh, spiritual attention is very important. And also, let the government allow and the principals allow, pastors are ready to go and talk to these boys and girls, to counsel them, to speak the word of God to them and pray for them and guide them. Mm -hmm. More, many a times, you know, we have gone to schools and we have conducted service and the We've had great deliverance service there, and we have heard of things. We have heard of children confessing that they have been recruited into devil worship and all that. So it is more than what we are thinking. Okay. And for the teachers, create a good environment in school. Probably there are some things that the students would have just talked to you and told you that I'm going through this and this. I'm pressured and all that. But if there is no good environment in school, now the results would be what we are seeing. Mm -hmm. That is how they communicate when they are pressured, when they feel that they have no but to speak. And, and, and Bishop, that's one of the things that we really must work hard on. Yes. Give the adolescents, give the teenagers, give the high schoolers alternative languages yes. uh, of expressing themselves yes. um, apart from the language of fire. You know, we'll be back because uh, young people also who are a little older than the ones in high school yes. have refused to, you know, register as voters, which yes. is... What's happening in the youth, eh, with, with the young people? A big question. And we are, we are talking to uh, Bishop Hudson Ndeda, uh, and he is coming to us from the church and clergy 
Association of Kenya. He's a national chairman. And once we come back, we'll continue to engage the matters around the church and what's happening in our community today. Again, stay with us. This is Spotlight. <music> Viewer, this is Spotlight. Welcome uh, again, and we are talking to Bishop Hudson Ndeda, who is coming to us from the Church and Clergy Association of Kenya. And we're talking about uh, different issues that are uh, impacting their society right now in the present uh, situation and what the response of the church is. And we were just talking about young people and schools and uh, alternative languages apart from the language of fire but we also bishop uh, also hinted to or connected that to the young people who are supposed to be seven million seven million young voters mm. fresh voters are supposed to join what you can call the the voting grid yeah. but they are not they are disinterested mm. and someone was asking even if we extend the period of time these disinterested people, because Kenya has this culture of last minute. Mm. There was no last minute anything. There was no uh, last minute take up. Mm. Now, what is happening to the young people? Because they can connect to, you know, or connect with this uh, voter registration process. Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, that is an area of concern. <coughs> mm -hmm. We expected um, there will be there will be mass voter registration in the exercise that has just ended. But unfortunately, uh, it was uh, very low. The registration was very low. And um, we want to urge the young people to register as voters. There have been a song that has gone through across the years that you are leaders of tomorrow. And uh, that is a myth. It should not continue. You are the leaders of today because um, we have young people who have gone to school, who have trained they are through university and all that, and they, they, they have the skills. They can make good leaders. The reason why we have old people calling them young, uh, they say young leaders, it is because the young people are not taking up the position that they're supposed to take up. So an old guy, keep on believing he's a young guy, because how can you be above 50 and you're calling yourself a young man <laughs> mm. or a youth? Um, we... we we want to appeal to Parliament, probably, to give IBC more money, but even if they are given more money, because we want more young people to mm -hmm. register, we want them to be part of the decision making in 2022. Before you kick off the exercise, do enough sensitization. I feel it was not enough. Mm -hmm. It was not enough. Uh, they didn't do enough sensitization. They need to sensitize the youth. They need to know first why they need to have a voter's card. And two, they need to understand why they should vote and why their vote is important. Uh, once that ex is explained very well, then they will come up and uh, register and make a, uh, help us make a decision in 2022 so that we shape our nation. We are coming to a point where we feel, yes, uh, we need the old guards in politics. We need the older leaders because that is the, we will get wisdom from them. But we want to see more young leaders coming in, uh, elected, and especially in 2022, we want to see young leaders being elected. But how will they be elected? They cannot yeah. be elected by the old guards. You see, uh, yeah. Bishop, uh one of the perspectives has been that one, the reason why, one of the reasons why young people are not responding uh, to registering as voters is because they have observed the politicians over time. They've watched uh, them uh, do, live the kinds of life that they live, and they have not felt an impact of the politicians in their circumstances, in their cares. So part of the apathy has actually been, been, been created by bad examples in terms of uh, the political leaders that we have. Uh, and um, one then asks, if voting, if good leaders are not part of the solution for the young people, yes. who are known to be very innovative, mm. what could 
what could they be saying in terms of this is our sol these are our solutions? You know, this is our this is the place we're going to get solutions from. I mean, just your comments on that. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. You are right because when we're like we are in a campaign period right now, there are so many promises that are being made. Mm. So many promises. Every candidate is coming up and promising everything until you feel that after 2022, we'll have a small heaven in Kenya. Mm. So it is so discouraging to the youth when, for example, somebody says we will create four million jobs mm. and they vote. And the very person who said he will create jobs for the youth and you realize there is no job. Uh, that could be one of the reasons why the young people feel our vote is not helping and it's not counting. But also, I would also want to speak about the integrity of the vote. Uh, the IBC should give us the integrity of our vote because we have had issues, people saying that uh, the elections have, been, have not been free and fair in this nation. That can also discourage people from registering as voters. Some people feel that even if I will vote, my vote will not count. It will not work. So we need to work on those areas whereby we have, and all that falls on what I said, integrity. If we have leaders of integrity, there is no way you can stand before people and campaign and say, I will do this, I will do this, I will do this, and you do nothing. That is lack of integrity. You know, Bishop, when you, when you, when you read it, let me ask you a question because yes. uh, uh, let's make Let's make an assumption Yes, uh, that IBC has actually said, given a list that you, presidential candidate or uh, candidate for governor, whichever position, you are not you know, qualified on going by the integrity, in measure of integrity, you don't qualify, right? Now, would the church at that point openly speak and say, if you have been flagged, red flag by the IBC, then you will not be voted for. Can the church begin then to specifically uh, talk uh, uh, about particular people and they say they've been red flagged, we will not vote for them? Yeah, yeah, that is right. For me, particularly me, and personally me, as the chairman of the Church and Clergy Association of Kenya, I'm prepared to buy the bullet. If I know of a leader who has no integrity, and he finds himself on the ballot, I will speak about that leader. Mm -hmm. I will say, ABCD has been raised on you. Can you clear your name on that? Mm -hmm. Yes, so that we, we have to sensitize people. But then why should IBC wait for us to speak? They give us wrong people mm -hmm. so that we speak. They are the, they are the watchdogs. They are the ones who are to tell politicians. And I liked it. Uh, I think a few months ago, the chairman of IBC talked about it. And I could see the discomfort against the, uh, the politicians. Uh, Kenyans are behind you. The chairman of IEBC. Just know that Kenyans are behind you. Mm -hmm. Because we are tired of such leaders. Please don't allow them on the ballot. Don't. If people have integrity issues, they have court cases that touches on integrity that, that are ongoing. Why should you clear them? to go to an election. But if you, if the IBC will make a mistake of clearing them, we will name them. Mm -hmm. We will talk about them. And okay. we will say we don't feel that you have enough integrity to become a leader in this. So it's just a matter of time. It is just a matter before of time. Before especially uh, Bishop Hudson Ndeda begins to say that these persons, they don't pass the integrity test. And you know, I rely on you. Mm -hmm. You give me the space to speak. I will, <laughs> I will tell them, <laughs> uh, so and so, mm -hmm. ABCD has been said on you. Mm. You have this and this and this case in court, and it touches on your integrity. Kindly, just step down from wait, the Wait rest. for another time. Wait for another time. We look forward to that. Another. We look forward to because that would be yes. yet another big thing. Yes. You know, the church in this season mm. is doing some unprecedented things. Yes. So that would yet be another thing that uh, we look forward to hearing from the church. You know, you know I, I'm looking for days of... Uh, uh, I'm positioning myself to re replace the Archbishop Mandingi Monanzeki mm -hmm. and the rest who were there who spoke boldly. And in their days from their speaking, there is a lot of that happened. Mm -hmm. And they faced a very tough government that one could not speak in. We thank God for the freedom of expression today that was not there before. 
So why should I keep quiet mm -hmm. when I have the freedom to speak? And you have, ex as you say, there are people who were in a more hostile government. Yes. Uh, li Christian leaders, and they spoke. Yes. And now there is more freedom now, mm. or the more why, mm. you know, with facts, of course. Yes. I'll be able to express and guide the people. Yes. We will look forward to that. Uh, and uh, still on this uh, leadership and as, as the leaders, the aspirants uh, move around the country, we saw in Kisumu uh, the, uh, something we don't want to see. You know, it invokes memories of this country that we don't want to go back there. Yes. We saw violence and we saw uh, stones being thrown. We, we saw a scenario that we don't want to see again. Yes. Can you speak to that, Bishop? Yeah, well, what happened in Kisumu was unfortunate. It was very unfortunate that that happened, and especially in this generation that we are in, where people should be reasoning differently and doing things differently. We, we want to urge the youth not to accept to be used, because uh, you will destroy your life for no reason. Give everybody a chance to speak. They are speaking to you doesn't mean that you must vote for them. But listen to them. Maybe they might speak one thing that makes sense. But if you stop them from speaking, then how will you know that they are not the right candidates? So we, we are urging every politician to make sure that they are able to contain their supporters so that we don't see such ugly situations like those ones that happened in Kisum, because it is very early. We have like nine months to elections. If it begins to happen now, what do you expect to see? We don't even have official aspirants. Yes, we don't. They're just have. hopefuls. Yes, they're you hopefuls. They are, some of them have not even been cleared mm -hmm. by their parties. We don't even know whether they will be on the ballot, but yet we are seeing this. And this is where we say if you are a political, if you are a candidate, you are a politician, and you encourage such, such are the people we don't want to see on the ballot. And we are happy, yesterday I saw the police have arrested one leader in Kisum that they suspect that he was behind those ugly situations. If he is found culpable, uh, such should be a lesson to the rest. Should be a lesson to the rest. But politicians just know our eyes are on you. We are marking you very well, whatever you do. We are following you. And if we see such instances again, and you are involved, we, as I said, we will name you mm -hmm. and shame you in public because that is not the society we want to see. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's not, definitely, that's not the society we want to see. Yes. And uh, what we want to see, one of the big things that especially, as you have cited, the church would want to see are leaders of integrity. Yes. Now, there are candidates who are heavily relying on the church, mm -hmm. right? Because they have, as we've said, they really are coming from the values that the church has taught them. You know, they want to be leaders. But in the past, we have seen candidates who have relied on the church or they have uh, uh, hoped that the church would give them platforms and support. But the church has not risen to that, to that, to that, to that, to that place where they can support uh, leaders or aspirants who have values that the church supports. Mm. Now, Bishop, in your a uh, very esteemed position. How do you think that these candidates can be supported? Because they are rallying, yes, in their names, but they are coming from the background of the church. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, th th that is a good point. We, we, we really want to encourage not just the church. We're talking about Christians. Just imagine if we have leaders who have integrity, who fear God in this nation, from the president going down to the MCA. Just think of the kind of society we will have. That, just think of the kind of nation we will have. So we, we encourage everyone as we move to the elections. If you have uh, Christians, you have brothers and sisters contesting in the coming elections, kindly support them mm -hmm. because we want to change the narrative. We want to change the way things are done. Yes, we have politicians who are coming to church today. Um, yes, because of, uh, they know we have votes and all that. But we want them to know that is not enough.
coming to church and associating yourself with churches uh, is one thing. And uh, in fact, uh, most of them, we have not seen them in church even for the past 10 years. I do, we don't know why now. Uh, they are coming, they are flocking in in numbers and all that. Uh, just know that we will be smelling on you and see your motive. Are you looking for votes or you believe in Christianity mm -hmm. or you believe in Jesus Christ? Is mm -hmm. he Lord and Savior over your life or you are just coming for the votes? So... Let them know it is not just enough that they are coming to church. That there are things, there are morals that we'll be looking at. And uh, yes, we cannot get 100% perfect people, but we'll be going for lesser devils. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> lesser devils. Uh, Bishop says lesser devils. <laughs> All right. You know, um, you see, it's also a factor of the pastors. Yes. Because one of the things that has raised concern in the past mm. is when this, what do you call them, lesser devils, so to speak, when they, when people come, when aspirants come to church, and for some reason, the pastor is in a position or finds himself, herself, in a place where they have to pray for these candidates, and sometimes even anoint particular candidates, mm. uh, in a way, putting as if, say, speaking as if they are spiritually endorsed. Mm. Now, this in this season, mm. how, how would you speak to pastors and these prayers for aspirants? How should they manage that moment? Yeah, it is very tricky. And sometimes <laughs> I realize, uh, as you say, there are sometimes uh, pastors who are carried by emotions and all that. But we all know, we are theologians and we all know Prophecy is not prophecy until it comes to pass. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel when you anoint somebody and tell him, God has spoken to me, you are going to become the next leader, and they don't become? How do you feel? How does the society look at you? And even the very congregation you prayed for, that you preach to every day. I think the best prayer we are going to pray in this nation is that God give us godly leaders. Mm -hmm. Give us leaders with integrity. Give us honest leaders. So the best prayer for me, if any politicians come for my prayer, I will pray for them. But I will not force God to make them leaders. I will say, God, if it is your will, then so be it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's, let us pray for the will of God, but don't not, uh, let us not accept uh, that surely this is the leader that mm -hmm. God has raised. Uh, but we all know, even in the house of uh, Jesse, everybody came for the oil, but the oil refused. <laughs> the oil only touched that one that God had anointed. Mm. So there is no way we can anoint everybody to become a president, for example, in this nation, because there will be only one president mm. at the end of the day. There is no way you can anoint five candidates for a, a, a constituency seat. And give them the same prophecy. And give them the same prophecy that uh, God has spoken. Mm. So let us not be carried by emotions. Let us hear from God. And that place where you have not heard from God, pray for the will of God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, because pastors do play a very important part. Yes. Uh, even in this campaign season. And you head uh, the Church and Clergy Association of Kenya. We know that there are several other umbrella bodies. We have the EAK, we have the NCCK. And the question uh, is, do these bodies sometimes meet and uh, share uh, perspectives? So when they have even their independent uh, expressions, yes. that they, there is one voice. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Uh, there are some people who, who think that the church is divided. The church is not divided. So when you hear of CCAK, you hear of EAK, you hear of NCCK, probably it's just to bring leadership closer to people because we are so many. But um, we are doing the same work and we consult, we do talk. These leaders, we, we know one another and we talk and all that. A good example is the last time when we were talking about politicians not speaking on our pulpits. If you remember, on the same day, we had three different press conferences. Uh, CCAK had a press conference, EAK had a press conference, NCCK had, the Catholic bishops had a press conference, and we were speaking the same thing. Mm. 
we said we don't want politicians to take over our services because they are so sucker. And therefore, we are speaking. We are talking together and we cannot afford to speak differently mm -hmm. as a church because we are reading from the same Bible, we are worshipping the same God, our values are the same. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we are one. Okay. Yes. I think that unity and the more visible it is, yes. whether it's in terms of people being, the leaders being together or staying, you're reading from the same script, yes. it would be also a very important uh, uh, component uh, going forward. Yes. Uh, then there's a Christian uh, bishop. There's a Christian who will actually go and vote, right? And uh, there is the Christian who is uh, being spoken to, hunted for you know, by the politicians. Now, what would you, how would you guide the Christian uh, in terms of how they manage themselves in this campaign season and eventually at the voting time? Yeah. Um, you know, Christians, uh, we need to understand that we are representing Christ. Mm -hmm. So we cannot behave just like any other person. We have to behave differently because much is expected of us. Uh, we will not stop people talking to us, but we, we all know, all these people who are coming to speak to us, we know them. Probably some of them has um, a history. Probably some of them, from what they are speaking, you can feel. Uh, from the people they're associating with, some associating with themselves with goons, and all that, you can look at them and know that this is not the right leader to vote for. And one thing I know about voting, it is about personal conviction. It is not even a must that you vote for somebody who will eventually be uh, the winner. <clears throat> but when you vote for somebody because you believed in his values, you believed in his leadership and all that, even if he doesn't get there, you have done what is right. Mm. Yeah, don't be, don't just run with the crowd. Don't run with the crowd. Be very conscious and vote from your heart. Okay. Yes. Uh, and uh, that's a very important point that yes. you're not voting just to make a victorious statement in terms of the person. Yes. You're making also a victorious statement in terms of the vision you have for this country even in terms of values. Yes. I think that's a critical, critical point there. Uh, and uh, going forward as we uh, end uh, this conversation, what should we expect from the church? Are there, is there a calendar of events lined up uh, that we should expect this to unfold? We expect this to unfold as the church continues to lead the country uh, and the faithful in terms of the way they should um, conduct themselves during this season. Yes. Uh, uh, what is expected from the church in this season Expect a lot of prayers. Now mm -hmm. that we have uh, some space to pray, we will be praying for the nation. We will do a lot of prayers. We will do a lot of fasting. We will do a lot of, uh, yes, prayers. Everything will uh, point out to prayers, mm -hmm. praying for the nation and praying for the candidates. We will even pray some of the candidates that are not right. Something will just speak to them to drop from them. Mm -hmm. That is part of what we are doing, mm -hmm. we will be doing. And also expect us to speak, we will be speaking. Up to the next election, you can be sure, for me, I will speak many times. When we see something that is not right, we will point it out, we will not keep quiet. Because uh, we don't want to join the complaining crowd. We want to reach a point when we tell people, we spoke, we told you, but we were ignored, mm -hmm. or we were hurt. So sometimes you don't speak so that um, the people accept what you say, but you speak to be heard. Yeah, some, at, at some point, somebody will say, somebody spoke, but he was ignored. Mm -hmm. That is why we speak. But we pray for a very peaceful campaign period. We want to remind the politicians and uh, Christians, please, if you see any politician who is not behaving well, don't waste your vote on them. Mm. Don't waste your vote on them. That is our rallying call. Don't waste your vote on them. We, we, we might not tell you vote for so and so, but be guided and give us the best leaders mm -hmm. that the country needs as we move forward. All right. Yes. And uh, given the heat uh, that is going to build up as competition builds up as well, then we do expect lots of bold voices yes. coming from the church. Not just voices, but bold 
voices coming from the church. Yeah. And because you've already doing that, I will look forward to more because the voice of the church brings great guidance also uh, to both the politicians and the entire nation. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so thank you so much for being on Spotlight. Uh, we will definitely keep track uh, on what's going on and uh, uh, keep speaking, you know, keep thinking and keep guiding uh, at this particular time. Yeah. Viewer, we've been talking to Bishop Hudson Ndeda and it uh, comes out very clearly. One important thing that, came, that comes out is that as you prepare yourself to vote, let your conscience be awake such that you do everything, not because everyone is doing it, but you are intentional and remember that this is also a moment for us as Christians to exercise, to exercise our inspiration that comes from the Holy Spirit. This has been Spotlight. Thank you for watching.